You're watching News Click, and I have with me uh, one of the most well-known voices when it comes to food security in India, and that is uh, Dr. Ritika Khera. And we are actually going to talk about uh, the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana, which is likely to end pretty soon. Uh, but uh, who knows? There are some news reports which suggest that it might be get extended. Uh, Professor Khera, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, let me ask you, do you actually think that this is going to end or is it too much of a political uh, golden egg to suddenly stop uh, all of a sudden? <laughs> uh, so, of course, I, I, unfortunately, I'm not a, a mind reader or not able to do forecasts of what the government will do, uh, especially of these governments which have a knack for doing unexpected things. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan An Yojana is concerned, which is the part of the Pradhan Mantri uh, Garib Kalyan Yojana that mm -hmm. provides double rations to all those existing ration card holders of the public distribution system. Um, you know, since the it started in 2020, the government has had a tendency to always only extend it on the last day or in fact sometimes announce the extension even a few days after the deadline has gone. Mm. Uh, this has actually uh, caused some problems in the implementation. We can come to that later on. Uh, mm. But the fact that it has the extension hasn't yet been announced is not uh, particularly surprising to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Though this time, perhaps the circumstances are a little bit different from previous mm -hmm. times because uh, this year's procurement was a bit lower than anticipated in previous years. Mm -hmm. uh, but in spite of that, actually, the stocks uh, situation is very comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, so what has happened is that over since 2016, at least, uh, food stocks with the Food Corporation of India have been way higher than the buffer stock norms that the government has. Mm -hmm. And this time, even the lower stocks compared to previous years are actually still much higher than the buffer stock norms. If the government wants to continue this double provision, it can do so without uh, you know, jeopardizing our food security situation and whatever norms we have had, in spite of the fact that, you know, the output this year, the production and procurement this year was somewhat lower than previous years. You know, this is an interview that I'm doing in the English language and most people uh, who watch such programs, of course, NewsClick has a certain kind of viewer who is informed in a certain way, but most others think that this is just free food. This is only going to make the poor lazy. 70 years, why do we still have to give this? This is, you know, this thing about free Mufka uh, saying our income tax money goes, it's wasted, all for votes. Now, what do you have to say to those people? Why, after seven decades, do so many people, and I was uh, uh, reading a note that you, you were, you'd written that uh, even this 80 crore is actually less than what it should be, right? Yeah. So why do, why do even 80 crore people need very cheap food. Right. <laughs> so I think there are different things one can say about uh, this question. One important thing is that even though there has been uh, exceptionally, there have been phases of exceptionally good GDP growth uh, over the past 70 years, some were high and some were quite mediocre, the fact is that the fruits of that growth have not been shared equally by the Indian population in the Indian population. So mm -hmm. people like you and me, we have benefited tremendously from what has happened in the past three, four decades. Mm -hmm. uh, but not ev we are not typical Indians. So, uh, so fact, that people like me have to actually stop eating to lose weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have yeah. so much food well, available. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so we have the that problem at the uh, the top end of mm -hmm. the distribution, but I think the fact is that the diets of a uh, large majority of Indians remain very poor. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them report having to skip meals uh, mm -hmm. every once in a while, and especially since the pandemic 
you know, this was even documented by a bunch of people who did surveys uh, in different mm -hmm. parts of the country. Um, mm -hmm. So nutritional uh, poverty is a very widespread phenomena that exists even if there was no pandemic. The mm -hmm. pandemic actually has made it a food security crisis also. It's not just that mm -hmm. you don't get good food to eat. For many mm -hmm. people, you don't actually, people were not getting adequate uh, food to eat. So mm -hmm. in a nutshell, the answer mm -hmm. is that uh, there is a lot of inequality and a lot of this inequality is actually hidden from people like you and me uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, the media is just not showing us, uh, uh, you know, when the news, you know, you should, someone should do an analysis of what makes the headline. Uh, yeah. And actually, you know, it touches a very small segment of the population. Uh, so the fact that we don't see it also, is part of the problem. The only time actually when mainstream media was focusing squarely on this issue was during the lockdown when we saw all these migrants uh, stuck in urban centers. Mm -hmm. I think that was the first time where there was like this collective awakening and social, you know, this consciousness of everyone was mm -hmm. sort of shaken uh, because they began to see what, uh, it, you know, the conditions of Indians are really like. And this was mainly focused on urban areas still, right? Uh, uh, rural areas also have uh, equal amount of distress. So I think for all these reasons, and because we have, you know, uh, Orwell has said this, that either we all live in a decent world or nobody does. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for that reason alone, we should actually consider programs such as the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, the public distribution system, the midday meal mm -hmm. scheme, as actually the best use of taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, income tax is just 25, less than 25 percent in any case of what the government spent. So, huh, no, that is, that is, uh, yeah, yeah, tax, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all kinds so of I taxes. Think, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's the best. Well, uh, you know, one of the admissions one would have to say that when the government said that it's going to through this very un yojana, it effectively from through the back door admitted that 80 crore people are poor that they need help just to eat, right? We are still now, we have never acknowledged what the poverty level actually is in India. And you have actually calculated and you have argued that that 80 crore number itself is in some way the data has been fudged or misread. Could you just elaborate on that? Yeah. <laughs> so just backtracking a little bit. See, the mm -hmm. 80 crore people who are getting subsidized ration <clears throat> from the government, yeah. That didn't start with the Prabhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. That no, just that, just that, that it had yeah. to be given at a much, much more subsidized, much uh, the amount had to be increased. That yeah, itself but, suggest, yeah. Uh, yeah. Suge suggested yeah. that there so are so I just want can, to correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think people should know that the coverage of the public distribution system jumped to 80 crores. Uh, as a result of the passage of the National Food Security Act in 2013. And yeah. between 2013 and 2016, all the states implemented the act so that we were in a situation where we had a system of social protection that was mm -hmm. ready to be ramped up in the way that this government did uh, during mm -hmm. a crisis like the lockdown. So I think that even the harshest critics of the PDS People mm. like Suti Bala, if I may mm. mention his name, mm. were forced to admit that this was, uh, you know, mm. a lifesaver for the country at that time. Now, but well, just just to clarify number, again to the, I'm just I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but just to clarify, if you could explain that the Food Security Act, which uh, you know enabled 80, 67 percent, if I'm not wrong, the percent of the population. Coverage to be covered by PDS. But within that, there was a layering done. A large number of people were considered to be able to pay a certain amount, which itself was an issue, right? No, 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 hang on, hang on. No, so the, the NFSA, the National Food Security Act, it said mm. that in rural areas, we will cover a national average of 75% of the population. In right. urban areas, it will be 50%. In poorer states like Jharkhand and Bihar, the rural coverage went up to 90%. Mm. 
in richer states like Punjab and Haryana, the rural coverage was a bit lower. National average mm. was 75%. Mm. Under the NFSA, the everyone was supposed to pay 1, 2 or 3 rupees per kg mm. Mm. Uh, depending on which grain they got. So if they got yeah. rice, it's 3 rupees a kilo. If it's wheat, it's 2 rupees a kilo. And if it's coarse grains like bajra or jwar, then it's 1 rupee a kilo. Mm. Some states said that, look, like Tamil Nadu, they said mm. we have been giving free rice forever. We are not going mm. to even charge that three rupees. Mm. Uh, mm. Other states gave additional subsidies like Chhattisgarh mm. and Orissa. They were selling even rice at just one rupee. So mm. that was the situation until 2020. In mm. 2020, what the government did, the central government did, they said we are going to, instead of giving five kilos per person, we'll give 10 kilos per person. That doubling part, we will give free yeah. of course. And meanwhile, before because the central government didn't act fast enough, some state mm. governments, they had already started announcing that, you know, even the NFSA portion, the 5 mm. kg, the regular portion, they had already made it free, some of them. So mm. as a result of this lockdown and the Pradhan Mantri Gali Karan yeah. Anna Yojana, mm -hmm. what happened is that people started getting 10 kilos per person per month. Mm. and 5 kilos of it was free 5 mm. kilos ah. was still charged at the old prices of 2 yeah. or 3 rupees a kilo right mm. now this has actually also created a lot of confusion in people's minds like mm. a lot of them don't know that the double part is supposed to be free the dealer mm. tells them ke mm. wo bhi do rupay ka hai so ah. they manage to they cheat pay. them Mm. Or, yeah, yeah. So there are those kinds of issues that have arisen mm. with the doubling and also because of the fact that it's been done in this haphazard way where it's not mm. said, okay, this will continue for two years so that people have a chance to know what their entitlements are. Uh, so at least in a few villages in Jharkhand, we have seen how the doubling has actually mm. not benefited everyone uh, mm. because... the And it's a very convenient kind of arrangement. What the dealers mm. do is earlier if they were giving four and a half kilos out of five now yeah. they've started giving five full kilos no cheating mm. but because people don't know about the extra five kilos they siphon all of it off Seven. Oh, okay. so the people are happy because they're now getting five kilos five they don't realize that five yeah. kilos is the mm. dealer is happy because he's getting five kilos bonus and mm. uh, the governments are happy because they're getting so much free publicity mm. and goodwill mm. that, you know, this. In, in, in fact, in many places, it has reached. I'm not saying that this is the story everywhere. Please yeah. bear that in mind. This is from yeah. a few villages where we have seen this is happening. Mm. Uh, in many parts, of course, people have got their double I've ration got also. I, this, I have just, just, just a digression, uh, just for our viewers and, and for me as well. I just wanted to know. Well, uh, given that uh, people in rural India and poor people even in urban India have very little access to proteins or to, you know, uh, uh, fats, uh, what is the amount of rice or wheat that an average person should be eating in a month? So, uh, this, according to national sample survey data, Mm. All India average consumption per capita per month used to be just under 10 kilos. Okay. So basically right now, the situation is that the 100% of a person's requirement is coming from this TPS. Right. But, but for people like you and me, I don't think we consume 10 kilos per person per yeah, month. Right? Our consumption is much because lower. We get a lot That's of our one... calories from proteins and from fats. That's and... right. And also our lifestyles are so different that we don't, yeah, need, that we don't need that much. Even if we, yeah, yeah. So that's one part of it. The other thing is that if you look, compare India with other countries, including China, which used to be mm. really much poorer than us once upon a mm. time in the 80s even actually, yeah. uh, or any other neighboring country, the Indian diet is very poor and mm. it is not diverse. Yeah, so mm. the diversity in our diet, especially proteins, especially animal proteins, is very mm. poor. And for a very long time, we have been saying that the PDS should look beyond wheat and yeah. rice mm. and should consider just as Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, and perhaps even Kerala have done, where you mm. get edible oil and you get dal. In fact, in uh, some some people in 
a place like Himachal Pradesh can get up to three types of dals at a very heavily okay. subsidized price, 30, 40, 50 rupees, you know, that range. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And in Tamil Nadu. So all these mm -hmm. states are making efforts to provide more nutritious items also through the PBS at a regulated mm -hmm. price and also a subsidized price. In mm -hmm. other states, this kind of thing has happened sporadically. I don't know if you remember once Sheila Dixit was in big trouble uh, in Delhi over prices of dals and so they had started yes. supplying yeah. through Suffol yeah. boats. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah. So, so that kind of thing I think should be a regular feature of the PDS especially mm. in the poorer states you know nutritionally mm. poor and just economically poorer states like Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, that whole eastern belt but in mm. fact the lack of protein is also a very serious issue in uh, most parts of the country. So mm. this PDS to think of it only as a channel for dumping all the excess grain that is stocking up in an FCI, I think mm. we should look beyond that. Uh, so and that I, I, I would like to yeah. remind you that right at the beginning you had said that you think that there's a better way to use this uh, excess stock that FCI has. Uh, so yeah. why did you just... Tell us okay. that continue? Yeah, so, yeah. so actually, yeah, you had mentioned... So... Uh, See, the National Food Security Act from which this 80 crore coverage figure is coming, the number was basically 75% of the 2011 rural population mm. and 50% of the 2011 urban population gave mm. us something like 80 crores at that time. Mm. But now we are in 2022. Mm. In 2021, we should have had another census which has mm. not happened. Not and happened. because of that, what has happened is that the numbers have of coverage of the PDS have not been updated. Mm. But we do have population projections from yes. uh, the census people. Mm. And mm. if we were to use the projected population of this year, 2020 or 2021, then using the same coverage ratios that are specified in the National Food Security Act, 75% mm. and 50%, mm. you would actually get about 10 crore more people into the mm. PDS. Mm. And, you know, this would have been such a great thing to do at the time of the lockdown, because what was happening yeah. at the time of the lockdown is that people didn't have PDS ration cards. And that's why they were yes. left high and dry, right? Mm. So doubling helps those who have who a ration have. card. Yeah. But you you had huge numbers of people, especially we saw the uh, plight of the urban poor, who mm. didn't even have ration cards. So they actually don't benefit from this Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana at all. Whereas mm. they're seeing their neighbors who, ha who mm. are lucky enough to have got a ration card getting mm. twice as much uh, grain. The other thing that I feel we could be doing with these excess stocks is And again, so on this issue of updating the population numbers, the Supreme mm. Court of India in August directed the government, the central government, to do this updation exercise. And the mm. hearing was supposed to happen in September. The government was supposed to come back and answer why isn't it using projected population figures to increase mm. the coverage of the PDS. Uh, mm. But so far, I don't think uh, any response has come. Or if it has, I'm not aware of it. The other thing, in fact, the Supreme Court has also highlighted and asked the government to do something about is the setting up of community kitchens. These mm, are okay. actually a fantastic thing, right? Yeah. So mm. again, if you may recall from the time of the lockdown, Kerala mm. was amongst the first movers. They were giving packed food packets yes. for people yeah. to pick up, mm. right? Uh, in Tamil Nadu, you have Amma's canteens. Mm. Uh, in Karnataka, there was this nascent thing called Indira canteens, which actually didn't mm. really take mm. off in the end. Uh, in Jharkhand and to some extent in Chhattisgarh also, there are mm. dal bhat kendras, where for five mm. rupees, you can get a plate of rice with dal. And I mm. think for an additional five rupees, they give you a boiled egg also. So this okay. is actually mm. not a bad meal for a lot of people. You know, mm. if you get for mm. 10 rupees, one egg and some, even mm. if it's watery dal, it's not a bad mm. uh, meal. Mm. Even Delhi had, uh, you know, our government yes. had started some kitchens. which some haven't one really rupee thali is at one point. That's right. And, yeah. and in Maharashtra, they had these Junka Bhakar centers. So mm. a lot of states have made some fledgling efforts, but there mm. hasn't been a central scheme which says, here is the allocation of grain. Why don't you set all these kitchens up, uh, you know, community kitchens up at bus stands, mm. hospitals, 
railway stations these are the places where a lot of the you know po floating population uh, people mm. who come to the cities for uh, illness and mm. uh, you know for their health uh, needs etc uh, and the Supreme Court in January, I think, reminded the government and gave them three months time or something like that, saying, why don't you mm. set up these kitchens? Uh, mm. But again, I think nothing has really moved on that. So when we have this excess grain, I think that, you know, one, expanding the coverage of the PDS so that the population base is updated just mm. that much. Uh, and the second is also to consider very seriously the setting up of community kitchens because they provide a lot of relief to people in distress. So, you know, let me be the devil's advocate here. And one of the arguments that some people make is that uh, given that there is, uh, we are seeing the labor participation rate in India actually dropping further. And there is, uh, there was an increase in um, a you know, number of people working in the farm sector since 2019. Since the summer of 2019, it has increased. There's been a reversal of trends since then. Some people say that this has to do with the fact that there is the PM Kisan Yojana. Everyone wants to go back and show a certificate to get that 6,000 rupees a uh, year, and which is not very little, given that, you know, if you look at some of the surveys, like uh, the NAFIS survey tells us that the Bottom 30% of agricultural households have the top, have a cutoff, uh, you know, family income of some 3,500 rupees. So you get 6,000 rupees a year. And if you have two people in the family who can get that, then you end up with 1,000 rupees a month additional. Then you have a certain amount of free food coming in. Does that at all lead to a situation where people would want to work at all? And I mean this in a sense that not that not because oh they're lazy, but because when we think of aspiration to work, if working means you're just about going to have a subsistence level of existence, why would you work? So what is the this focus on uh, not nothing that has uh, you know any employment, no employment generation, nothing which creates anything beyond food and subsistence survival. That seems to be the problem with these policies. Right. So, <laughs> again, I could say many different things to that. First, I would like to say that why should we think that the aspirations of the average or the poor Indian are any different from, say, uh, Mr. Adani, who is the flavor of the month? Right. So if he is not happy with his whatever, I, like the number is so big, I don't even <laughs> remember it. And he is, you know, his aspirations are to actually reach further heights. Uh -huh. why, why do you think anyone, you know, a, a farmer working on her field is any different? That's uh -huh. one thing. The second is, I think the tender, there is a tendency to, uh, to perceive forms of social support as unproductive so you know one of the things that it's been 20 years that i've been hearing this because uh i started working on nrega 20 years ago and at that time they said oh you yeah. should teach people how to fish not give them yeah, fish. Not you know, that, yes. that old adage yeah and actually you know the thing is that i see programs of social protection such as the mm. nrega or the pds or other forms of cash support Mm -hmm. I see them as actually investments in people. If mm -hmm. a person is able to get employment in her village, in his village, it mm -hmm. stops them from having to migrate or family to a city in search yeah. of work. That mm -hmm. means that the children can stay on in school for longer. They don't have to drop out. Their studies don't suffer. And that means we are investing in the future generation by allowing, mm -hmm. enabling their uh, mm -hmm. education to continue. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if you provide food or cash support, basically mm -hmm. you're enabling people who are really living on the brink of subsistence to mm -hmm. st keep their nose above the water and mm -hmm. to, you know, make investments in themselves because, you mm -hmm. know, we are a labor surplus country and yeah. that is our strength. If you mm -hmm. have a enfeebled, uh, poorly nourished, always falling sick, poorly educated workforce, 
Yes. Where are you going to go? You will have a reserve army to do a lot of cheap labor for you, but that's not mm. value added, right? Mm. Then it's adding value for the rich people. Mm. But if you really want to empower people, then you have to ensure good health and good education. And mm. all of these programs of social support, whether it is eggs in the school meal program or just simple grain from the PDS or employment in your village through NREJ, all of these things together I think they do provide a sort of buffer for very poor people. Interestingly, that uh, those who now oppose it say that, you know, there's not enough entrepreneurship in the poor and you're making it even worse. Interestingly, they should be reminded that industrialists right before uh, we became in independent actually wanted this, such things to be done as part of their own scheme. The Bombay plan had several of these things which they thought should be done for the poor. Today we have a situation right. where the middle class feels that, I mean, it's on all these WhatsApp groups. I, I just want to end with one thing. Uh, you know, you were talking about ration cards, the lack of ration cards, not giving uh, people enough uh, access. And this is an anecdote from my own experience. I remember I there's a carpenter who does some work for us. And during the lockdown, he would call and say, that can you give me some money because I don't have food. So I would transfer some money to him. And then one day he called me and said that I'm going to so I said that how will you go? He said I'll walk. I said why? He said because Pradhan ne phone pe bola hai ki aajao naam likhwana hai ration card. Mein. So there, there, there is that um, desperation that people have. They just don't get to eat. And we sit here thinking that oh this is just free food. Yeah, no, and I think also the ration card is tied to all kinds of other schemes. Yes. So when people who seem better off, like maybe mm. your carpenter is not, he mm. has skill, right? He has real honor. Yeah, yeah. So his earnings mm. can potentially be quite high. Yeah, but yeah. even so, he is interested in the ration card because it may give him access to other schemes of the government. So yeah. it's a bit of a pack. It's not like Aadhaar, which is just a Khokla card, which doesn't entitle you to anything in itself. It can mm. disentitle you from your existing uh, yes. entitlements by not, uh, you know, if you're not linked. But the ration card is actually a meaningful identity card and access to a range of government services. Mm. And I think that's also why people are so interested in having access to it if it is possible for them. Ritika Khera, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that the government's listening to you, not this show. I mean, no one's going to be watching this show in the government, I'm sure. Thanks. But I hope you've written a lot. I hope, they <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're going to, uh, they listen to you, they read you. I mean, people like us do. So hopefully you are going to be uh, heard and this will be extended. It's much needed. Thank you so much.